Hey guys, what's up? It's Shinobi Ranger here and welcome back to another episode of our Total War 3 Kingdoms 1v1 unit comparison series videos and today we have Pearl Dragons led by a Sentinel versus Azure Dragons led by a Champion. The stats for the two units should be popping up on screen anytime now so you can pause and take a look and see how the two units size up against each other. Okay, we are playing this on romance mode. So in romance mode, the characters in the game are represented as larger than life heroes as depicted in the novel The Romance of the Three Kingdoms. We are also playing this on extreme unit scale setting and on extreme unit scale setting, we have 40 men per unit for infantry with the exception of a few units. Okay. Now, we, this is a battle of elites. So the pearl dragons are the dragon unit for the sentinel class and the Azure Dragons are the Dragon unit for the Champion class. Okay, two heavyweights, five way going at each other, the elite units of each class. So let's take a look at our units. So the concept behind the Pearl Dragons of the Sentinel class is to have a unit which is very proficient in the use of their weapons, the pole arms. So both units are pole arm based units. Okay. The Azure Dragons are hybrid infantry because they wield both Glaives and bows, whereas the Pearl Dragons wield only Glaives. So the idea behind the Pearl Dragons is to have a unit which is very proficient in the use of their weapons to the point where they solely rely on their weapons, on their um, mastery of their skills, wielding their Glaives to protect themselves in melee and to protect themselves from incoming projectiles. I mean, deflect or block incoming projectiles. Okay. So in order to have the freedom of movement to enable them to freely swing their glaives around for their self-defense, our poor dragons don't wear any armor. Okay. So if you zoom in, you can see that they have barely any armor. Like almost no armor okay but one thing what really up makes me upset or rather pisses me off rather is the concept of the unit is very good but the way they represented this unit is they look like pajama boys like really they look like shopkeepers and random citizens on the road okay it is very bad the concept is great but you could have at least given them some sort of a decent uniform to denote that elite status like, look at their weapon, okay? Let's let's take a look at their weapons. You can see that that is an ornate weapon, okay? These are not ordinary one of the mill glaives. You can see there is white cord wrapping on the handle on the hilt, and there is a tassel of horse hair, white horse hair. That's gonna if any blood slides down the shaft of the weapon, it's gonna absorb it and prevent it from sliding down the shaft and making the grip sticky. Okay. You can see there is a counterweight attached to the bottom of the shaft to improve the balance of the weapon. And yet these people look like pajama people. Like somebody of the road got up, just got up from bed, pulled out his glaive from his closet or wherever he was giving it and just marched off to battle. That's very bad. Okay. Now these units are assault units, melee units, frontline troops. They can take a beating and they can dish out the damage as well. One thing though, these Pearl Dragons do not have the standard charge the reflect versus cavalry which is found in all spear arm and pole arm based infantry. Okay, to consider that they have excellent defensive skill and they are they are having a block chance of 50% so they can reflect incoming missiles from the front using their glaives. Okay, but again the look is very bad. And I forgot to mention, so how do you identify if the unit is elite is if there is a golden outline on the unit icon as shown here, you can identify that the unit you are facing is an elite unit such as Protectors of Heaven or the Han Imperial units or the Dragon units or faction specific units. Okay. Now let's look at our Azure Dragons. So the Azure Dragons you can see are heavily armored. Okay. This is I would say pretty much three fourth scale lamellar armor okay iron lamellar armor three foot plate i mean this is like this is the kind of armor which elite units wear so it's like maximum limit of armor protection so they build a glaive and they build up they carry a board their backs okay 
So these are anti cavalry troops. They are the dra dragon units for the champion class. Okay. So the idea is uh, they have very limited ammunition, eleven arrows. So they have a small quiver at the side. You can see that. So you can use them to first rain a few volleys of arrows and then have them draw out their glaives and meet the enemy in combat. Okay. Very heavily armored troops and decent defense skill as well okay now also these azure dragons have a formation called mixed missile so what happens is in this mixed missile formation a uh, mixed spear sorry first three ranks or two ranks or I, I do not recollect uh, of the azure dragons go knee down and point their graves upwards something like an infantry square if you are talking about the napoleonic uh, era warfare where you had infantry squares versus incoming cavalry charges as a means of protection. So what happens is the front two three ranks they go kneel they kneel down and point their players up. Okay, so they are anti cavalry. They have the standard charge reflect versus cavalry. Where if the unit is braced and an enemy unit of cavalry charges straight headlong smash into their faces kind of charge, the cavalry unit is going to get evaporated. That is for sure. Okay. By default, these Azure Dragons are set on melee mode. Okay, so you can see that's the reason why they have their glaives on. And you can see these are not very ornate glaives. Like you have some, like you have some wrapping on a handle and maybe a small metal rod kind of thing. Like you could consider that as a counterweight, but again, not like our troops who are so devoted to their weapon mastery and proficiency. Both units have charge reflect, sorry, uh, a splash attack on their charge. So when the two units collide at the point of first contact, when they swing their glaive, any units who are caught within the arc of the swing of the glaive get knocked back. Okay, that is how either they get knocked back or they get outright killed. So that is how you identify that the charge, uh, the splash attack is being implemented here. Okay, this is one video where there is going to be no cat troops. But I can't trust the AI. The AI is one finicky piece of shit. Okay, this AI is so terrible that whenever I had high hopes that this Azure Dragon unit uh, video comparison with the Azure Dragons is where we get to see a decent charge. And consistently, the past few videos, whenever Azure Dragons are into play, AI has been really screwing me over. Okay, so again, I have heads up. But okay, as usual, let's do the same thing. So primary general of Dueling, stay far away. Secondary general, you will draw the enemy general to duel and fix him there, and we we'll let the two units ride out in peace. Okay, let's start. To rush up there. Okay, we want to pull him away into a duel and give some decent distance between the two duelists and the two clashing units because. Uh, Okay, he's going to challenge us. I presume yes. Pull him away, pull him away. Because if this general dies very close to his fighting units, we will get like his his death in close proximity to his troops. It's going to put a huge morale penalty on his troops. So that's going to sting the. That's going to affect the fairness of combat. And again, oh my god, sticks. Oh. These Azure Dragons are again headed towards the earth. God damn you! Freaking hell, man! Hello, over here! No, no, okay, 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 good, 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 good. Let's get some distance between them, boys! I really hope we get to see a decent charge here. Run, 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 run away! We need. I think he's gonna get killed before we initiate combat. I am sorry about that, I really cannot help it. Okay, now let's see if this time we get a charge. I really pray. Morale penalty is gonna come in. Shit, it's not good. Oh shit, he's dead. Hold on, hold on. What's going on? Are you? Oh, you're not charging us. Great. 
How nice. Hold on guys. I am so sorry guys. I'm not ready. Yep, there's a moral penalty. God damn it. Oh wow. Oh, shut up. In the interest of time, let's triple speed this. Okay. So this is going to be a long, hard, brutal fight. And I'm sorry about the splash attack on the charge. I could not help it. Like, I'm really... Okay, 25% of the Azure Dragons are dead. Thing going on. Okay, we just killed off one third of the Azure Dragons. Okay, we lost 25% of our youth, sorry. Yeah, we lost 25% of our unit. Okay, 100 kills. Okay, we lost one third of our unit. We killed half the Azure Dragons. Fighting is still going on. Yep, they are dishing it out alright. Oh my god, it really they're like pounding each other with the pulp. Okay, we just crossed 140 kills. That means Azure Dragons are in the two digit mark. Okay. 150 kills. Okay, two thirds of the Azure Dragons are dead. We are almost down to half strength. We are at half strength. We just hit half strength. Wavering. 
Pause, pause, pause. Okay, we won. 117 to 71. Okay, 169 kills to 123 kills. Okay, form up again, reform. Let them go home. We won the battle. Play. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Okay, 169. 117. Oh my god, what a fight, man. We, we, we started the fight here and just push, 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 push. Keep fighting, keep fighting. Oh, what a slugfest. Okay, let's see the damage. So, we just dropped to below half strength. So, 169 killed to 123 killed. Oh, that means. So one is to one, it's 46. Okay, so it's something like 1.3 to 1. Okay, so I can say that the exchange rate was one per dragon for one Azure Dragon, and one third of the men who killed who scored one kill got another kill as well. So in that sense, we got one one by three like one point three ratio. Of kids to death, like 1.3 to 1. Whoa, what a long fight. I mean, they, it, it, see, it, we are shaken up. Like, I think we lost more. Yeah, we lost half the morale. So, you have taken a beating, man. That's for sure. But these Azure Dragons. Okay, so in terms of utility, if the two units were to be charged by a unit of cavalry, face in the face, a like direct frontal charge, that unit would evaporate the cavalry unit and come out cleanly maybe take a few knocks here and there this unit get, would get wiped out I wouldn't say wiped out, we would take more damage compared to them because we just, eat, we just get the heat in the face like we get heated in the charge and of course we have higher melee skills as well so higher melee skill and damage output as well so that they are going to recover but they are going to cause more damage to us than to them okay so cost wise, we cost 900 and the Azure Dragons cost 1000. So they are 1000, sorry, they are 100 units of currency more expensive compared to our old Dragons. But again, they, see, you can use that unit even against Cavalry. Okay, you can receive a charge from Cavalry in the face when the unit is stationary and braced to receive the charge. This unit, I mean, unless you have a strategist in the army you can since they are elite units you can have formations deployed only if a strategist is present if you are in if this unit deploys its spear wall and braces okay but otherwise no this unit should not have more damage okay long gruesome bloody fight but we came out on top anyways that's all for this video guys i hope you enjoyed the video if you like the video then leave a like if you did not like the video then leave a dislike Share, comment and subscribe and make sure you hit that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any new videos when they are released. Until the next video, this is Shnoki Ranger, signing out. Bye!